Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about the 2019 NFL Draft Class, uh, specifically the top five quarterbacks based on analytics. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at all the quarterbacks, all, all five of them, um, who have the best potential to become uh, long-term starters or better um, in this particular draft class based on data, based on analytics. Um, there's still a lot more football to be played. This season, in many ways, is going to determine what the final rankings are in many ways, and also if there's a surprise guy here and there. Um, but for the most part, all five of these quarterbacks, based on data, have the best shot to have a good season this year and ultimately bump up their averages uh, to the point where they can end up becoming um, a long-term starter or better at the NFL level, um, based on data, based on analytics. Um, if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. We'll follow that stuff all the way. Let's get to the list of the top five. So first off, uh, number five in this list, Ryan Finley, quarterback out of NC State. Uh, based on his high school production score, he has a 76.13 out of 100. Score again, high school production in many ways just deals with development how developed a quarterback is coming out of high school and the vast majority of long-term starting quarterbacks and Pro Bowl quarterbacks um, put up above average, if not more so, um, high school production score. So most NFL quarterbacks were above average compared to their peers when it comes to high school football. Um, and uh, it, you don't have to agree with it. You can disagree with it, but the bottom line is it's a trait. All of them had it. Every single multiple Pro Bowl quarterback since 2007 uh, NFL draft class had at least 84 or higher and every long-term starting quarterback had at least a 69 or higher when it comes to their high school production score um, So it's just facts and uh, when it comes to Ryan Finley, he at least passes that threshold um, His highest FBS score is a 91.22 out of 100 which pretty much hits above the quarterback threshold The starting quarterback threshold and the Pro Bowl quarterback threshold since the 1958 NFL draft class And the only major question mark with Ryan Finley is one age um, because he was a redshirt junior quarterback last year and he's going to be a redshirt senior this year and two is his career fps score of only 69.75 out of 100 which isn't really near the all pro career threshold it is above the pro bowl career threshold but when you look at the averages at the position he's definitely not above the pro bowl career average or starter career average so that if he was to have a down year this year um, it definitely could drop him a bit um, so he's someone who needs to come back this year strong um, kind of ease himself up into the Pro Bowl starter career range. There's really nothing he can do to bump up his averages into the All-Pro career score. Like that's just something that's just not feasible based on the paper. You know, like it, even if Ryan Finley came out this year and put up a 99.99 um, season, um, he just really wouldn't have enough uh, to bump himself up into the All-Pro career threshold. But he definitely has a good chance to get into the Pro Bowl and starter career threshold. I think in many ways Ryan Finley has potential to be a long-term starting quarterback. To backup quarterback but that's about it and then of course we get to number four on this list which is Jake Browning quarterback out of Washington um, when you look at his high school production score he had 96.21 out of 100 his highest FBS production score is at 89.64 out of 100 um, this is a guy that was highlighted before last year in last year's top five quarterback list uh, Browning ended up having a below average season last year compared to his his uh, sophomore year but Still solid production, um, nevertheless, uh, you know, pretty much hits all the high school production scores you're looking for, hits all the FBS production scores you're looking for. And when you look at his career data, 71.62 in terms of his career data, doesn't really hit the all-pro career threshold, but definitely above the Pro Bowl career threshold. And when you look at the average career data, pretty much within range of Pro Bowl or starter potential. Uh, Jake Browning is another guy that needs to come in this year, have a very strong season. Most likely not going to end up in the all-pro career score area, but definitely someone who's going to end up in the Pro Bowl to start a career area. Then we get to number three on this list, which is Trace McSorley, a quarterback out of Penn State, um, or as a, a colleague of mine, Bill Carroll, has dubbed Trace McGritty <laughs> in many ways. Uh, when you look at his uh, FPS uh, production score, he did 93.20 high school production score, 89.49 FPS production score, pretty much hits all the threshold you're looking for at the position there. When you look at his career FBS score, he had a 78.60, which is above the all-pro career threshold, Pro Bowl career threshold, and starter career threshold. When you look at the averages at the position, uh, more so closer to the, you know, the, the Pro Bowl to starter range. Um, 
even if he was to have a 99.99 season, probably not going to end up get, having an all-pro career score, but definitely has a good shot to end up being a Pro Bowl to start a player based on his overall data. Um, McSorley is another guy that I think is kind of underrated in this quarterback draft class. May not end up becoming a great long-term starter, but definitely has a shot to um, be a top quarterback in this class. So um, this is not as strong of a class as it was last year, guys. So I'm just letting you guys know that. So um, McSorley definitely has a shot to become a Pro Bowl so a starter guy, but definitely not an all-pro guy. Then, of course, we get to Will Greer, quarterback out of West Virginia. Um, when you look at his FBS production score, he had a 99.70 high school data score, um, 78.81 FBS score. Um, pretty much hits all the high school production data points you're looking for. It doesn't quite hit the Pro Bowl career threshold, um, but um, when you look at the averages at the position, pretty decent in terms of all-pro career average. And when you look at the um, for at least for the thresholds and then when you look at the average is definitely pretty much above all those areas um, Biggest thing with Will Greer is that he comes back this year and puts up an 80 plus percentile season I think if he does that if he can put up an 80 plus season Then uh, he could easily end up being the second best quarterback in this class based on data based on analytics So um, another guy that's most likely not going to hit the all-pro career threshold area Has some off the field issues as well because you know, he was uh, kicked out of Florida due to um uh, steroid use and other sort of things but um or at least performance enhancing issues and uh you know there's definitely some concern because of those types of things but definitely has at least a solid foundation of production data so he has a chance to be at least become a pro bowl starter um, when it's all said and done if he maintains his averages and then lastly we get to the number one quarterback in the 2019 nfl draft class which is justin herbert quarterback out of oregon uh, when you look at his data, 92.62 in terms of high school production, 93.91 in terms of FBS production, pretty much hits all the thresholds you're looking for at the position. And when you look at the averages at the position, above the all-pro career average and above the average all-pro score. Um, all he has to do this season is really put up a 90-plus percentile season this year. If he can do that, maintain the averages that he's, that he's at right now, um, then I think he has a good shot to be the top quarterback in this class based on data and based on analytics. So it's the best shot to become an all-pro to Pro Bowl potential player uh, to long-term starter based on his overall production data. Um, so not a very strong class uh, when it's all said and done, but definitely pretty intriguing. Um, I, I do understand that there are more quarterbacks than these guys. There's definitely guys like Clayton Thorson, Drew Locke, who I've done individual videos on on this channel. Um, which you can feel free to look at at your leisure but um this is not as strong as last year guys so uh you know looking at last year's class you had guys like baker mayfield none of the quarterbacks in this class are realistically going to have 93 plus percentile seasons back to back to back um, none of these guys are going to have that potential um it's just it's just they they didn't do it over the last two years so it's not going to happen now um, on top of that, uh, you have the, the, you know, the, the sort of wishy-washy question marks of Ryan Finley because of age, uh, Will Greer because of uh, the, the traveling you know, from Florida to West Virginia due to issues off the field. Trace McSorley is not exactly the most impressive in terms of arm talent. Neither is Jake Browning in some ways. So this is just going to be a fun quarterback here. I think... Um, I know a lot of times we say, well, everybody hates the quarterback class until they get to the next one. In many ways, based on data, based on like stuff that's not subjective, that's more objective, uh, I, I do agree that last year's class was a lot stronger class. But again, the five quarterbacks I mentioned have the best shot to have Pro Bowl to start a potential. And uh, who knows, maybe one of these guys emerges and puts in a really solid season and makes a name for himself. But, um, but we'll see. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below who is your favorite quarterback uh, in the 2019 NFL Draft class. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jim Metrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.